I don't know about you, but I changed occupations at least three times based on watching other people, what they did, and, and thinking, gee, th you know, that would be a good thing to do. And so, you know, with that in mind, uh, let me just take you quickly through uh, some of my career moves as they might relate to you. And uh, so, for example, I joined the Navy as a hospital men recruit, retired as a lieutenant commander, and not that many people do that. Uh, why did I get to do that? I had just scraped out of high school. I was four, 395th out of 406 in high school. What would make me think I could get commissioned? Um, I happened to be stationed in the right places to see the people that got commissioned, realized they weren't rocket scientists, they were regular people. Happened to get to know the people that um, um, made those selections and didn't just happen to work hard. And uh, always was the go-getter, energizer, bunny, volunteering for everything. And so when it came time for selections, uh, that's really why I did. I studied a little harder. I wanted to know why I was giving you a shot, not just um, giving you a shot. I wanted to know what their effects were and all that. So I just always worked a little harder, studied a little harder, not, not a lot. And uh, there you go. And thus my retirement check was about double what theirs was, just because I worked a little harder. That's a picture of me as a Navy Chief Petty Officer over there before I got commissioned when I was just a little bit younger. Uh, how to uh, get to uh, go to Cornell? I w when I got commissioned, they asked, what do you want to do? And uh, with the rest of your life, and uh, those of us sitting in class, and I was sitting next to the guy alphabetically who was number one in our, in our group and um, for the selection. And so he could have gotten anything he wanted, and he's talking about going to Cornell. Uh, that'd be a good thing to do. And uh, so I thought, gee, you know, that would be a good thing to do. Well, he's, he said, really, I don't want to be in food service, but uh, that'd be a great job when we, when we get out. So from, for him, he went off to his duty station. For me, I was running the radiology x-ray department at Bethesda Naval Medical Center. And the uh, opening, I guess, was came up in the food service, and I went down knocked on the guy's door. said, uh, hey, can I come down here and be your assistant? I didn't say so I can go to Cornell. I just said, you know, can I come down? Never had any interest in food say, food service in my life. Never did anything but eat there. Uh, and I started out my food service career as the assistant food service director at a prestigious hospital. Why? Because I took some initiative, right? Comes time to pick us three, three years later or so. Who gets to go to Cornell? They call that guy as food service officer and say, hey, what do you think about this guy going to uh, Cornell? And he said, I didn't had no idea he was interested in food service. For me, I'd expressed, uh, followed up on that uh, dream, and I went to Cornell, and that guy never did. While I was at Cornell, I joined the International Food Service Executives Association volunteer group. Didn't know much about it, can't remember a thing about it, except I was a member. And when I uh, graduated from Cornell and went to uh, my first duty station in Orlando, they had an IPSI branch and the rest, as they say. When I retired from uh, IFC, I, I uh, was looking for work, and I keep up with people. So a friend of mine was offered a job at North Broward Medical Center in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and his kids refused to leave. So the administrator says, well, who else do you know? Now, if I never kept up with people that I was stationed with in the past, he wouldn't have thought of me, but I do, and he did. And so I got a job, a great job. I worked at that hospital for eight years. Um, when I first got to that hospital, it was it made headlines in the Miami Herald for roaches, and it was had lousy food, and it was just the pits. How did I turn that around? Not my personal brilliance, I because I had been involved in IFC. I was the president of the IFC branch in Orlando for two years. Uh, they asked me immediately when I moved down to South Florida to be the president of that branch, and I asked the president if he was. Um, uh, not the president, but I, I asked a guy that I'd met at the IFSI conference uh, while I was on active duty. I said, hey, Steve, I'm looking for a chef. He said, hey, I'll come up and work with you. And uh, But uh, he was already a manager. So I said, well, why don't you come up and be my assistant? We still need a chef. We talked to the president of the uh, of the IFSI branch. And he said, well, I'll come up and work with you guys. He was a great French chef. Uh, they knew people. They brought some people in. And well, I guess maybe... Six months later, they won uh, second place in the Grand Buffet category, the biggest category, against all the hotels in Florida. And then we got headlines in the paper for the great chefs of North Broward Hospital. So it's all had to do with uh, with my connections. And if C uh, told you how I got uh, involved at uh, Cornell, I became president of two branches. 
when I, uh, I then decided to go up the rung and um, when I was the treasurer they didn't have any money so I had to be a real treasurer and I had to really pay attention so I did pay attention to everything I did I led a bunch of things came up with new ideas they didn't always like them but I learned how to run an association so when the association was about to go belly up uh, ultimately it took me two tries to do it but ultimately they selected me and I spent 18 years made my volunteers and my job running the association how to get my wife uh, if she uh, has a sister organization in Canada I used to be together um, and then they split apart thanks to my wife's uh, <laughs> ex-husband uh, but I my wife passed away from cancer and two weeks later it was my time to go up to Canada to represent IFSI to the Canadian group and my friends were saying we well, can stay home and be miserable or you know why don't you go it'd be good for you so I went and I'm crying out on the park bench because everybody's in there having a good time at the grand ball and I walk in and there's this beautiful lady who I knew who she was but that's about it standing up there in the dais and I'm thinking you know <laughs> I'm not looking for a wife. My wife just died. She'd been sick for a year, so I wasn't a shock. But, uh, you know, that would be good. And the rest, as they say, is history. So why did that happen? Because I had a smile on my face in the worst of circumstances. Uh, I still... Do -do -do -do. I, I saw an opportunity, and I said, well, that woman's not going to... When I get finished with my year of grieving, she ain't going to be around. Because uh, the rumor was she was getting a divorce. And so... Um, and that was, you know, true. So I thought, she's not going to be around in a year. She's too good looking and got a big job, makes good money. I better grab her now. So I did. <laughs> so. And then uh, finally, uh, how did I get this? Uh, what I do now? Um, I think I might have mentioned earlier I did. Uh, I was teaching food safety at HACCP in Vegas and um, to help somebody out just so that I could get known in Vegas. Well, how is anybody ever going to know who the heck I am when we just decided to move here on a whim? And I thought, well, there's a way I can sell this guy's uh, HACCP training classes, and that'll give me an excuse to go meet the chefs, meet the, meet the food and beverage directors. So I did. And then this uh, master chief from the Coast Guard Academy asked me to do some uh, classes, and here we are eight, nine years later, and now I'm a college professor and uh, done all these symposiums and moving on to the next phase with online training. So, you know, that's how simple life works. You just... A step at a time, fill up your bag of tricks, and my bag of tricks got me to Iraq and Afghanistan. You see the picture on the left. Um, it got me to the vice president's house. You see me talking to Cheney. My volunteerism continues, and I do uh, the culinary competition and list the date of the year award, uh, and run pretty much the military hospitality alliance, and that gets me hanging out with people like the commandant of the Marine Corps. We gave him his fifth star uh, for all the work he had personally done with us. So. Life's pretty simple if you just fill your bag up full of tricks and every once in a while you find you need them. And that's my story and I'm sticking to it and thanks for listening.